Software simulation is a foundational feature of Adobe Captivate, and I've had a lot of requests to do a video tutorial on it uh, over the years. But to be perfectly honest, the reason I haven't done it is I generally do video tutorials on areas of Adobe Captivate that I'm currently using, and it's been quite a few years since I've used software simulation. I've had a new client ask for some software simulation work, so I thought what better time than the present to take care of this. Now this video I'm going to do in two parts just because there's a lot of detail that needs to be covered off. Incidentally, there's sort of a checklist down in the description of this video that goes over some of the key things that you probably want to keep in mind before you start making a software simulation. But otherwise, let's get started here. So I'm going to open up Adobe Captivate 2017, which you can see on my screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and select Software Simulation and hit Create. And then I'm going to be left with this little tiny window here. And most of what you're going to do is done from this little window here. In this case, I've chosen an application that I'm going to use. And in this case, it's a web-based application. It's actually just the feedback form for Adobe Captivate uh, wish lists. Uh, so if you have a feature request that you'd like to fill out, uh, actually that's down in the description of the video as well. So you can go there and ask for new features in Adobe Captivate. So this is broken down into two areas. The first area has to do with size of your software simulation. And there's quite a few choices that you can make. Let's cover that off first. So the first thing you can do is choose screen area. That's the first option. And from there you can select either a custom size or a uh, default size from one of the choices here. Or you can choose full screen, which will record the entire screen that you see here. You'll notice with full screen that it gives me the choice between monitor one and monitor two. If you're running dual monitors as I am, you'll have this option. But when you take a look at the description notes, you'll realize that I recommend that you stick with monitor one for the reasons mentioned below. Uh, in this case, though, I'm going to go with custom size. So I'm going to choose that here. And of course, you'll see it snaps uh, to this particular spot. But of course, I can move this, uh, this selection area to anywhere that I want. And this is going to be useful if you're uh, recording something that uh, isn't necessarily full screen. Let's choose application and I'll show you how much more powerful this can actually be. If I select application, I of course can then choose which application I wish to record. In this case here, Internet Explorer was available to me and I can select that and that's what I'm going to be doing in this particular case. But you'll see there's some options here as well. So if I choose custom size, I can actually create a, a particular size recording. So in this case here, maybe I want to go 1477 by 719 or something like that. And that's going to give me that custom size that I want. Now I can increase this uh, as I see fit. So let's just take this up to maybe, oh, I don't know, 768 maybe. Let's see. There we go. Now, ideally, I just really want to record the contents of the web browser itself. I don't actually need the tabs at the top here in the interface for Internet Explorer. In this case, I don't want to show people that I'm using Internet Explorer. So I'm going to select Application Region. And as you can see, I can now select portions of the application, in this case, the browser window. So now I have a very specific area that's set up and I won't be recording any extraneous information either. The second part of this window is the recording type. Now I generally stick with automatic, but you do have the opportunity to record manual as well. In automatic mode, you can choose between demo, assessment, training, or custom. And of course you can do a combination of two, three, or four of these if you wish. To understand these a little bit better, let me explain that demo is like me telling you what you need to know. And you're simply viewing and watching and experiencing it as a passive participant. An assessment is like your final exam. 
So in this case here, you would be required to click the mouse at the appropriate areas, type in uh, information into various fields, and click on fields uh, or buttons to submit that content. Training is like sort of a combination of uh, the two, or maybe partway between the, the, the two of those. It's a little bit of a demonstration, but it allows you to interact with the project. Uh, so you can, for example, click, but of course there'll be captions and prompts that will tell you what it's expecting you to do next. Um, if I was to put these in a particular order, I might start with a demo and then provide you a training, and then for the final exam, provide you an assessment to determine whether you remembered everything that was taught in the demo and the training. Custom is for you to design your own specialized version of any of these or, or a combination of, of uh, both or, or, or several of them. Uh, I generally don't use custom. To uh, ensure that these are set up properly, because you can control some of the features and settings of these choices, you can click on the settings button here. And let's take a look at those now. So here's your, where you can select your preferences for the recording types, demonstration, assessment, training, and custom. And as you can see, each one has a set of features that have been selected for you. Before I do a software simulation, and if it's been a while since I've done one, I do like to re uh, reset or restore the defaults for all of these settings just to make sure they're set up to record the way I'm expecting them to, and even custom as well. While we're here, let's take a look at the keys subcategory under recording. If you were going to do a manual recording or if you wanted to manually add a, an additional screenshot, for example, you're going to need to know these shortcut keys or keyboard shortcuts, if you will. To stop the recording, you can use the end key on your keyboard. You can pause the recording using the pause key. Uh, if you need an extra screenshot, let's say something appeared on screen that wasn't there earlier, you can capture that by pressing print screen at any time. Uh, and of course, you can start and stop full motion recording uh, using F9 and F10. And of course, there's uh, panning related uh, buttons as well. And uh, you, of course, can toggle mouse capture and so forth and so on. Generally, I don't use the lower ones, but I do use a couple of these. Let me click on OK to return us back to the software simulation capture there. So I like to keep panning off because I'm usually recording a fixed area like I've done here. Uh, while you can record audio narration as you make your software simulation, I prefer to do this after in the edit mode. And you can uh, learn more about that in part two of this video. There is the opportunity to check off system audio. I recommend that you keep that unchecked because there is a, a audio indicator to let you know that a screen capture has been done, for example, or an audio indicator to let you know that it's capturing your keystrokes on the keyboard. If I check this off, you won't hear that. And I find it very beneficial when I'm making my recording to be able to hear those, uh, those indicators letting me know uh, if I need perhaps a second screenshot on a particular page. So I'm pretty much ready to go. I won't fill out all of this form, uh, but we'll just show you some examples of how this screen capture works. Uh, as, I, as I indicate down in the description below, it's very important that you plan your steps accordingly to make sure that you know exactly what the steps are that you wish to record. So let's get started now. I'm going to hit record here. I get a countdown similar to how I get in video demo, and now I'm ready to record. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click my mouse on the name field, and there's that uh, audible indicator letting me know that it's done a screen capture, and I'm going to start to type my name. And at this point, I can just hit enter. That will force another screen capture. Or I can click the email address field and start to type in my email address. I'm just going to make a fake one. OK. And uh, in this case, I am self-employed. So I'm just going to write self. And this is going to be a bug report. 
So let's say at this point I've finished my, my recording. I'm satisfied that I have all the information captured. I, of course, can just simply press the end key on my keyboard. And you'll see it working a little bit here. And as you can see, it's produced two different project files. So let's just do a preview. Obviously, some work needs to be done, and that's going to be in part two of the editing. But let's just see a quick preview of what's been captured so far. Uh, we'll preview in an HTML5 browser. So this is the demo. This is where you sit back, relax, and watch the demonstration presented to you. I find that the mouse movements are somewhat uh, sterile and maybe a little bit too exaggerated. So that's one of the things that we'll be editing in part two of this video. That looks pretty good though. I think we've captured what we've needed there. Let's take a look at the training and this is more of an interactive uh, project file. So we'll just do a preview in HTML5 here. So it's going to sit here and wait for me to click on the name field. And now it's expecting me to type in. And now I've got to click on the email address field. rsmith at mail.com, I think is what I wrote. And I'm self-employed. And this is a bug report. So again, not too bad. I've got some things I need to customize. Uh, maybe I don't want a scroll bar along the bottom or the uh, playback bar along the bottom. And, um, you know, maybe make some of the mouse movements on the demo a little less exaggerated. But otherwise, uh, a pretty good result so far. So at this point, what you can do is you can click on this little link I'll provide here, and that will take you right to part two of this video, and you can find out about editing your software simulation projects.